Throughout the Fallout series, certain races have been created through unusual and unorthodox ways. Ghouls through radiation and super mutants through FEV are just two examples where humans have been transformed into a newfangled race of humanoids, defined by their mixtures of physical, behavioral, and cultural attributes that separate them from the humans they once were. Today's humanoids are no different. The Slags, once human, now considered something else, a race of mutated humans that the rest of the world has seemingly failed to remember, and I think I know why. When the Great War tore the world apart, there were two types of people. There were those who were ready, and those who were not. The ancestors of the Slags belonged to the former, they were a secret militia who weren't able to secure places within vault Tech's series of underground shelters, so they made their own. They made use of an underground cave system and sealed themselves and their families inside during a time which would later be known as the Sealing. For generations, they lived within the womb of Mother Earth. They drank water from the lake, ate homegrown mushrooms, and slowly their population increased. So much so, their shelter could no longer accommodate their numbers. So the leader decided the seal must be broken, and they took to the surface to survive, which was easier said than done. During the underground retreat, their bodies had changed, adapting to life below ground. Their skin was drained of all colors, and their pupils were constantly enlarged. So when it came time to return to the surface, they found the sun to be unbearably bright, and the night sky was even worse. After a hundred or so years of living below ground, no one had ever seen the outside. For them, to be without a ceiling was strange, and to have so much room to move around was uncomfortable. And the night sky was the strangest and most uncomfortable thing of all. To them, it was a black sea of nothingness, and the sensation of falling upward was so intense that they would freeze in place or clutch the ground in fear. But with their survival at stake, they had no choice but to brave one or the other. In the end, they chose day, which was unpleasant but tolerable in comparison to the sea of nothingness. In time, those who could withstand being out in the open created a small prosperous farm, complete with its own water system, and over time they began to enjoy being on the surface. That was until the others came. People from Modoc, the nearest settlement to the farm, were out hunting when they noticed something in the distance. Something new, crops and livestock that hadn't been there before. To them, the farm had seemingly crept up overnight. Heading back to Modoc, the hunters told the others what they saw. They spoke of a farm to the northeast, a farm with fresh crops and healthy livestock, and this news was incredibly uplifting for the people of Modoc, because their own sources of food were currently being culled by an endless drought. This spontaneous farm was a miracle of sorts, something they hoped to benefit from. If not from the produce itself, then perhaps a new method of cultivation that could save their town. So a small team was put together, and they went off to make contact with the owners of the mysterious farm. But when they arrived, they were greeted with silence. They called out, banged on doors, and waited for someone to turn up. But no one ever did. Modoc tried many times to make contact with whoever was running the farm before they finally decided it must be abandoned. Whatever the reason was for the farm's existence was beyond their comprehension. But what they did know was that not taking advantage of what lay before them would be a great waste. So they assigned a single person, a man named Carl, to watch over the farm while the rest of them went home. The slags who were hiding beneath the farm didn't want to make contact with Modoc. They didn't want to mingle with outsiders, to make an ally, or to trade. They merely wanted to be left alone. Not by choice, mind you, but due to their fear of the outside world and of crowds. So they hid and continued to hide while the others would come and go, but now one of them had been left behind and he showed no signs of leaving anytime soon. The Slags aren't particularly violent people. They don't want to kill the intruder, as that could spell disaster if the others were to strike back. So they came up with a plan, a harmless alternative to murder. The bravest of the bunch, those who could face the night sky without immediately cowering in fear, smeared themselves with glowing fungus and patrolled the farm after dark. 
It didn't take long for Carl to relay stories to Modok, stories of strange glowing figures tending the crops and feeding the animals. They of course didn't believe him, instead they laughed and sent him back. In response to Modok's mockery, Carl began to drink. The encounters increased, as did his drinking, and one day he vanished. And the next time the people of Modok came to the farm, they couldn't believe what they saw. Instead of Carl, they found bodies, some crucified, others on the ground, all of which were left to rot in the sun, a warning, or perhaps a promise to those who dared to trespass. And this was enough for them to believe that Carl was dead, and the farm was truly haunted by ghostly creatures. In reality, these bodies had been manufactured by the slags. They weren't real, they were dummies covered with Brahmin guts, which from a distance was enough to turn away the most hardened wastelander. And this ruse was so effective, the slags never had another unwelcomed guest, and without interruption the group was able to thrive. They built an irrigation system and over time they grew enough food to not only sustain their numbers, but build up a sizable storage. Meanwhile, the situation in Modok grew increasingly desperate, as more and more sources of food were culled by the incessant drought that threatened to starve the entire town. An indiscernible amount of time later, Vajir, the leader of the Slags, decided that since their food supply exceeded their needs, they should trade with the surfaces, exchanging surplus foods for medicine, perhaps antidepressants which could help with their agoraphobia. However, their scare tactics, the ghostly figures and the dummies smothered with viscera have led to them being far too isolated for their own good, and the people of Modok, who now referred to the farm as the Ghost Farm, wanted only one thing. While the slags would very much like to trade, the inhabitants of Modok want revenge, as they believe the slags murdered Carl. When in actuality, Carl did nothing more than run away to the den, a place rife with drugs and slavery, where he can be found in a constant state of inebriation. It is here the chosen one can get involved, and depending on your choices, one of four endings can happen. Armed with flares and clubs, the people of Modok invaded the Slag's underground city. The Slags were quickly defeated, and the Modok residents slaughtered every man, woman, and child they found. Rumor of this vicious attack spread far and wide, and fear motivated Modok's neighbors to attack and destroy the town. The drought lasts for another seven long years. Even though the residents of Modok attempted to weather the drought, their dreams, along with their crops, withered to dust. The extermination of the slags only created new problems for Modok. Unable to find the slags' underground cistern to sustain the crops, Modok was hit hard by the resultant drought. Over the next several years, the people of Modok either moved away or died of starvation. Relations between the slags and the residents of Modok flourished. Between the two peoples, Modok prospered and became a major farming community, supplying all the outlying regions with food. Of all endings, Fallout New Vegas establishes the one where Modoc flourished as canon, as Jazz Wilkins, the great niece of Cornelius and Rose, the owners of the bed and breakfast in Modoc, the one with the chicken, comments that she was born and raised in California. And according to her grandpa, who is mentioned only, the raiders are mostly gone and anyone wanting a job at one of the many mills or farms is more than welcome. But now there's taxes and laws and other things thanks to the NCR, which admittedly have made things much safer, but also much more boring. Which is why Jazz packed up her things and headed east towards the Mojave. So, we know that Modok, thanks to the Slag's underground cistern, were able to weather the drought and survive. With that new technology, they went on to supply food to all the outlying regions of California, and through doing so were likely deemed essential by the NCR and assimilated. But while Modok is mentioned after the events of Fallout 2, the Slag's and the Ghost Farm have seemingly vanished. So what happened to them? Well, I think the answer is pretty simple. If Modok was assimilated by the NCR, then the Slags likely were too, and due to Modok being the larger of the two settlements, the Ghost Farm simply became a part of Modok rather than continuing on as its own location. Which is why 40 years later, the residents of Modok aren't talking about it. 
As for the slags themselves, their unique appearance would stick out like a sore thumb, meaning they have either stayed close to home, limiting the knowledge of their existence, or more likely, over the 40 years between Fallout 2 and Fallout New Vegas, their skin and eyes have returned to normal, and their severe fear of open spaces and large crowds no longer ails them, meaning the slags technically no longer exist. But that's purely speculation. Any number of things could have happened to them. Modoc could have turned against them once they had what they needed to survive. Or they felt threatened by the NCR and went back below ground. Or perhaps they migrated to a new location after the NCR bullied them off their land. Or maybe a newly mutated virus wiped them out, something the surface dwellers have evolved to combat. We just don't know. Meaning, until the developers say what happened to them, you can decide. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.